I'm Brad Meninga. I'm a ceramic artist. Uh, the, the first ceramics class I took serious ceramics class, other than like kids' classes in second grade. Actually, that's a better story. <laughs> when I was in when I was in second grade, well, we had a guest artist come in and we made monsters out of clay, and of course mine blew up in the kiln and took out half the other monsters. So my, the next time I got into ceramics was actually as an undergrad. Uh, we had a winter term, J term kind of um, set up. And my freshman year, I had no idea what, what to do. And, and someone invited me to, to do ceramics. And so that's, I learned from other students. And then I got the work study job maintaining the studio. So learned how to mix glazes, fire kilns, um, recycle clay, earning minimum wage. <laughs> Which, but it's a good way, it was a good way to learn all those things. Clay is a very technical medium, um, and there, there's so much to know that, uh, and a lot of it they won't, you don't, won't learn in an undergrad class, or even like a class at like Northern Clay Center. Um, just things about uh, firing kilns, uh, repairing kilns, uh, mixing glazes, uh, recycling clay, those things are often not covered in classes, and so, um, you know, ha having a, a job running the studio was a good way to learn those things. Yeah, so ceramics is my full-time job, um, and I pretty much treat it as a job, and now I, I, I go to work every day. <laughs> and uh, um, and I, so I, I really do try to, even if I am um, trying to take it a little easy, I try to check in every day with the studio. Um, part of it is if you, Clay wants to be worked or it's best to be worked at the right time, at the right dryness, uh, at the right stage. And so if you can check in on it every day, you can catch the piece that you're working on when it's ready to be worked on. In many ways, we, uh, people who work in clay feel like we work for, for the clay, like the clay determines our schedule. And if we try to fight that, then it fights back. But it's also just good to be in a habit because um, I, I may not always feel like uh, working on what I want to work on, particularly if I'm doing some of the pottery that I'm trying to sell. Uh, it doesn't always excite me to, to do that. So um, it's just good to be in the habit of uh, going to work every day. I don't think you could be surrounded by too much creativity. I mean, I think I, uh, the artists here uh, feed off of each other's enthusiasm for what they do and their creativity. So if anything, I'd like to see more creativity, um, be surrounded by more working artists um, here. If I get a little bored with what I'm doing or a little frustrated, I know I can go across the hall to the paint studio and talk to one of the painters about what they're doing and their enthusiasm will help um, inspire me to get back to work. And then if I want to get away from it, I do leave. I just, I'll leave, leave, leave town, basically. <laughs> so my favorite piece is usually the piece that I'm still working out in my head. And then once I start making it, I'm usually horrified with how it's going. And then I fall in love with it, and I'm really happy. And then I f get sick of it and finish it. And then I have to live with it for a little bit. And then ultimately, after living with it for a little bit, I can usually figure out if it succeeds or not. So I get bored pretty easily. So I ch actually do change my um, working style uh, every few years. So I'm currently doing kind of relief appliques on top of um, pottery, kind of neoclassical, eroded neoclassical style, and uh, Wedgwood fakes. But that's actually a, a fairly new way of working for me. I just started doing that about three years ago. So two things motivate me to work, I think. One is just curiosity. Um, I think it, almost every artist has this. Just a curiosity about materials, how they behave. So I'm almost pretty much always trying to push the limits of what clay can do and clay materials can do uh, and there's just uh, so many variables to play with um, firing styles firing temperatures firing atmospheres uh, glaze materials clay materials clay temperatures clay colors and then you know just millennia of ceramic history to also look at draw upon be inspired by so that's one curiosity and the second is pretty much a compulsion to document the world around me, which is more kind of being motivated by injustice. 
Um, I have a, a background in labor organizing and other forms of activism. Um, and I see ceramics as kind of a way to document what I see around me, to some extent comment on it, but by firing it in clay I'm kind of um, creating a document that will last of the world and, and, and what horrifies me. I do the St. Paul art crawl usually and a holiday show at the Schmidt that I, I organize, but it's a pretty large event now. I am currently getting ready for a large solo show in late March, um, which will be in conjunction with a National Ceramics Conference in the Twin Cities. And so my, my current body of work is this commentary on the constant rehashing of the Enlightenment that we go through, uh, and ideas of basic human dignity and who is entitled to that human dignity. And so I'm drawing largely on 18th century styles of ceramic work and faking them. So I'm making some fake Wedgwood pieces like the Canon, and then this kind of more eroded neoclassical um, work. And this is the White House uh, crumbling. <laughs> so, and a picket, a couple picket lines and uh, rue, which is the flower that represents regret. I don't, I actually don't like wall text. I don't want my pieces to require an essay to explain. I want people to be able to uh, bring their own kind of background and you know, life experiences to interpret what's going on. I mean, I think my opinions are fairly strong on them, but I'm not, I don't want to be uh, directing people too much on, on how they perceive my work. But I think the most important thing for people is to figure out what they want from their art, if they want it to be a full-time thing. Um, if it's gonna be a full-time thing, they, you have to re recognize it's gonna be a job and you're not always gonna enjoy it. And maybe you don't want that kind of an interaction with your art. Uh, maybe you want to have it always be fun, in which case get a full-time job that uh, gives you the stability to be able to do your art um, in your free time and when you want to and have fun with it. Um, People that make careers out of art are not necessarily the most talented, they are the people that stick with it. And so you need to stick with it for 20, 30 years before you, um, you know, really start to blossom, generally, most people.